hello everyone and welcome to my weekend vlog second week in a row of vlogging i am so proud of myself so i'm starting off this vlog here it is now saturday at one o'clock and we usually put abe down for his big nap around now and we're actually trying something new where we put him down in the bassinet and head on out for the day um we've never done it before but at the moment he's actually in a bit of a regression anyway with his sleeping and he wakes after 40 minutes so we're just gonna keep moving and we are trying somewhere new for brunch so i thought it'd be fun to bring you along and i'll bring you along for today and tomorrow a nice wholesome family weekend if you haven't subscribed to my channel and if you are new here please do subscribe i love meeting new people here and yeah i can't wait to introduce you to my family and to my lisbon life Saturday evening and it's bedtime for Abe. Uh, we just went for a walk there and um, nipped in for a quick cocktail which was delish. I had a margarita and loved every sip. Far too small uh, but um, we went to this hotel which is actually just across the road from us. It's called Brown's um, and I think they have a few locations across the city and they're really nice hotels. I would really recommend, I, can't, I don't really have that many recommendations for Lisbon hotels. I get asked all the time because obviously I live here so I don't ever stay in them. But that one is actually so nice and I have a friend that actually stayed there before and it's gorgeous. So anyway, I'm going to take my makeup off. I am getting ready to put Abe down and we are going to order in again because it's the weekend and we don't cook at the weekend pretty much. So we're going to order on a screens and yeah watch beef which is what we're watching at the moment and love is blind it is my guilty pleasure um i don't know if you guys have ever watched love is blind but i'm obsessed um it's so bad it's good so that is what we are doing today or tonight and i will probably just pick up this vlog tomorrow because today was sorry not the best but i promise i will vlog all day tomorrow So it is Sunday morning and this is the absolute state of me. I'm about to get ready to go to spin and I thought I would, yeah, do a little bit of a catch up today. Uh, we don't really have that much planned today. Again, we just want to make it, take it, make it easy. <laughs> well, make it easy for ourselves and take it easy. Um, but I thought I would do a little bit of a catch up because I feel like I haven't come on and like, chatted really since because i'm just back into vlogging and last weekend's vlog was um just a lot of fun um i didn't have time to sit down and chat with you guys and actually there's a lot that's changing or has changed and is changing in the next few months and i thought i would come on and just share a little bit about i want to talk to you guys about becoming a mom a little bit and 
the difficulties, the joys, um, the things I'm struggling with, the, the decisions I'm making um, about breastfeeding and yeah, how that has made me feel guilty mostly. I think welcome to the life of a mom. And then let's get into one of the biggest things that is changing. So, as you know, I live in Lisbon with my family and we moved here on March 1st, 2022. Basically, we moved here because we both work remotely and it was something that I always wanted to do. Connor took a lot of convincing. But yeah, we both loved Lisbon and we both love good weather. So that made it a simple decision. Um, and it's not too far from home. It is way more affordable than Dublin. So there were loads of different reasons why we chose Lisbon. But um, anyway, we moved here last year and quickly after that, I got pregnant um, because we were trying. We knew we were gonna be trying to have a baby. We had been trying for a while at that stage. So for those of you who follow me on social media will know that my pregnancy was really tough and I was pretty much sick for the entire pregnancy, which meant that our kind of year, our first year in Lisbon, we didn't actually get to do that much because I was so sick and um, it meant we didn't really get to avail of like being in Portugal, making friends like at the weekends, like it was just so hard. I actually wasn't really able to do anything. so. Anyway, then Abe came and it has been amazing. We've loved Lisbon. Um, there's firstly a lot of Lisbon that we don't love. So we've actually talked to a lot of people who live in Lisbon and they have felt the same way that actually the Portuguese are funny. They're, they're friendly, but they're not the warmest people. So that we don't love about Lisbon. Um, it's quite behind, so like everything is quite slow. Administrative stuff is just takes a long time, um, which kind of gets in the way of things. For me, with work, it was basically a nightmare, and that is one of the biggest things that was really hard about being here. Not only was I super sick and not really able to work, but I actually didn't have work because of being in Lisbon away from my kind of follower base in Ireland affected my work so badly. Um, and we didn't really foresee that being such an issue, but it was. So all of those things being a little bit lonely, not really kind of finding that we felt at home with uh, the Portuguese people or Lisbon in general really meant that when Abe came we kind of just both it's very surprising for me because I really don't love Ireland and I really just actually don't really like living in Dublin and um, there's a lot of parts of it that I find really difficult um, but that's for oh, that's just boring uh, I won't go into that too much but um, basically when Abe came we realized how much we missed home how much we missed family um, and that when you have a child it just changes everything um, Connor's both his siblings that had babies within the same month as us. Um, my best friend had a baby in the same month as me um, and it was just super, it made everything really hard being away from home. Um, and we basically came to the decision that we want to move home, um, which is insane. And we are moving home in August. It is now, um, what month is it? It's the end of April and yeah we're gonna be here for another three months and then we are moving back to Ireland so I have a lot of mixed feelings about it um, but there is no part of me that thinks that this is a bad decision every part of me I'm a very gut decision based person and I just believe so much that this is the right decision there's nothing that could really sway me but it's funny, neither of us are excited about moving home to Ireland because every reason that we left Ireland is still there and um, is always going to be there. But I suppose you can't, we've realized you just can't choose your home. We're from Ireland, it's where all our friends and family are. And um, that 
just trumps everything else basically. But I wanted to um, obviously share this with you guys because it's a very big change for us. Um, but I also wanted to share because it's a big decision, um, one that I never thought I would personally make or be happy making. So, my battery went um, and I'm just walking to spin. So I thought I would just continue this conversation just want to get back and be straight into looking after Abe so that Connor can probably go to the gym. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, we're moving back home after only, it'll be like a year and a half and we had planned on staying for about two or three years. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to go through the kind of things that we learned. Um, but also just, I just rem remembered as well that another reason was like Lisbon we love and it has been so amazing living here and we're so like zero regrets it was it was one of the best experiences for us anyway as a newly married couple um it came with its challenges but we learned so much um and enjoyed every minute of living in on mainland europe like it's something that i've always wanted to do and we're so lucky that we can do with a european passport i just feel like you should if you can we first made the decision i got messages from people saying you know i now have three kids and i've always wanted to do that and i regret not doing it so i'm so glad we did it when we did and we had the baby here and we didn't let that kind of hold us back but we could stay here and be really happy for another year and a half and do the full three years but like we know that lisbon isn't our forever home we don't love it enough to stay forever. So we just kind of thought, oh, what's the point of investing another two years or a year and a half, making friends, you know, making friends with, for Abe and all of that. And then leaving, I was like, we might as well just go home and make those memories with the friends that we do have, our lifelong friends, our family. And anyway, some of the most important things that I have learned, and I will never speak for Connor, but we have discussed it a lot and we've both kind of learned this. But for me anyway, the most important was that the grass is always greener and there are pros and cons to everywhere. And I was very black and white about wanting to leave Ireland, that Lisbon would be the best and I'd be so happy here because of the weather and that would kind of cure all my problems or my unhappiness or whatever. But the reality is, is that, yeah, the grass is always greener. That everywhere, even if I was in my dream city, New York, even if I, we managed to move there one day, there would still be aspects of our life that would be harder because we were in New York and we weren't in Dublin. And it definitely made me appreciate, you know, that, you can't just say it's because of here that I'm unhappy. There are good elements to everywhere. And you are, when you are settled somewhere, you're always going to find that there are things that you're missing out on. Whether it's you're in Dublin and you're missing out on that dream of living in Lisbon or you're in Lisbon and you're missing out on the qualities of home. Another thing I learned was that being comfortable and having an easy life doesn't always result in happiness and you can very easily kind of equate being comfortable and the ease of your life with happiness and um, for example our life in Lisbon is super comfortable we can afford way more here the quality of our life is so good we live in a massive apartment basically on the Grafton Street of Lisbon like you know the the most sought after area in Lisbon um, we can afford to go out for dinner Friday and Saturday if we want. We can afford to go out for dinner during the week. We can just afford a lot more because of how much more, you know, how less expensive it is here. And, you know, Connor's work is like five minutes. His office is five minutes from our apartment. We can get Ubers everywhere because they're like three or four euro for an Uber. Yeah. 
our life is very easy. That doesn't result in pure happiness or happiness that actually, you know, creates memories. And that brings me on to my next point that reflecting on this decision, I realized that, you know, with the weather and everything that when we were making the decision or actually after we made the decision, I was kind of not regretting, but kind of upset at the journey coming to an end. And I was focusing on all the good things about Lisbon, obviously, like you do, and realizing all the things that I really will miss. This, for example, blue skies every single day, like the summer lasting basically 90% of the year, um, which really is a, a massive thing. But when I look at the happiest time of my life, I was probably my late teens, my early 20s. I was, I spent a lot of time with my family, you know, my cousins and my aunties and everything. We would do a lot of Sunday lunches, Sunday dinners. I was spending the majority of my time with my best friends. And that is what happiness is, not clear blue skies. I'm not gonna look back and think, oh, that particular clear blue sky, that really made me laugh or that really brought joy to my life. Like, it's the time with people that really is what the best part of your life is made of. And I think the ease of our life is not something that we're gonna look back on and be like, oh, that was like the best time of our life. Quick break. Okay, that was amazing. I feel absolutely fabulous now. Another realization and thing that I've learned, which is really big for me, is long-term versus short-term goals. I'm a really short-term person. I focus on what I want now, and I want the happiness and joy immediately, rather than working for something. I don't want to go through the pain or the, the challenge or the struggle, unless it's fitness orientated. But in all other aspects of my life, I'm not good at thinking long-term. And for the first time in my life, you know, the immediate joy comes from, yes, this fabulous weather, um, you know, the, our beautiful apartment that I wake up to every day, you know, living in Portugal is great. Um, myself and Connor, like, as I said, no regrets. We have had the most wonderful year um, and had the best experience where there's no wrong choice, but, I think now assessing where we go from here, I have been able to step back and say that my long-term goals, um, one day perhaps moving to New York is my biggest goal ever. I'm pretty scared saying that because it's something that it breaks my heart not living in New York. It is where I've wanted to live ever since I was 12 years old and I went with my dad for the first time um, and it's my goal and our goal to, to live there as a family for a, a while anyway um, that is our biggest dream um, my biggest dream also is to be able to afford that um, even if we don't end up moving to New York I would have thought life experience is so much more important than um, than a job or making money, but actually, you know, making money and your job. Again, this, you'd think I'd know this before I was 34. I've actually only learned now that it's really important to me to be secure and to think about that long-term security for myself, for our family, and to work toward that long-term goal of moving to New York is not something that we can achieve really being in Lisbon um, because, for me anyway, and my career um, in social media creation, um, I have to be in Ireland to really make a go of it and to uh, be successful. So um, that's kind of two points in one, but yeah, first of all, realizing that, you know, okay, I'm not excited to go home to Dublin. There are a lot of aspects of our life that will be a lot harder money-wise being able to afford Dublin it's super expensive and um, our lifestyle will be not as as lush and um, our you know what we'll be able to afford apartment wise will be pretty basic and minimal but long term um, I think our goals as a family 
and personally for me in my career um, the best decision is to move home and because of that I have absolutely no doubt um, about the decision that we've made and also I'm really happy with the decision even though the short-term repercussions are not that exciting so I'm actually really proud of myself um, <laughs> Again, I'm embarrassed to say at 34, I'm only kind of starting to make these kind of adult decisions. Um, I realize I should have been doing that years ago, but anyway, a bit late to the party, but better late than never. So I just wanted to share that big life update with you guys. Um, and yeah, I can't believe it was like just over a year ago that we moved here and um, yeah, it's been one of the best things I've ever done, and Connor agrees, one of the best things he's ever done to step away from your life and be able to reassess and to see what's important. For me, I learned that, you know, Dublin, Dublin ain't that bad, and Connor learned that being away from Dublin ain't that bad, and actually that, you know, it's really exciting and you learn so much and you grow so much, and. Yeah, so I think we've come full circle. Okay, excuse the music in the background. The only thing that keeps us unhappy is singing uh, mostly Disney songs or Frank Sinatra. So, um, I am... Um, does anyone else's smoothie or we have the ninja, like, always smell? Uh, anyway, I... I'm going to make myself a smoothie instead of having my oats just because it's hot and I'm thirsty. So we eat, I'd say, about four bananas a day between the two of us. So I just went to the shop and got loads of bananas. So banana, oats, a little bit of cinnamon, greens. I think that's just more if they're addicted to it. Yeah. Sure. So I'm just back in the shop. And I've got two options for dinner this week. I usually do like just get ingredients day per day um, for dinners because there are some days where, well, a lot of days where <laughs> Neither of us are in the mood to cook. Well, Connor never cooks. Um, and uh, we get a takeaway during the week. I got ingredients for chili con carne um, and salmon. So I think what we'll do is chili con carne so I can make it now. And it means that we can go out and enjoy the day and then we can have that later and then it'll be cooked. I usually try and make the dinner in the morning um, chili con carne, spaghetti bolognese, anything that like I can make in a pot and just leave for the day because as the day goes on it's just impossible he's getting fussier and um, yeah it's just you're getting more tired etc so yeah I'm gonna do that now and um, then it'll be nap time for him but we've decided to, we'll probably just go out with him in the stroller because he's not napping at the moment really very well, like I said yesterday. Um, so we'll just do the same like we did yesterday. We'll either go for brunch or maybe just a coffee. Um, are you happy with chili and carne for dinner? Okay. okay. Anyway, I'm gonna cook this and then I will bring you along for the day. <laughs> Another catch up. 
I know I've already done a pretty big catch up already with you guys. I feel this video is going to be super long and just like me chatting the whole time. Um, but um, I've made a lot of changes in the last few months or we've made a lot of decisions. Um, and obviously becoming a mom. Uh, basically there are things that in being a mom, I didn't think I would find hard or I didn't think I would, um, I thought I would experience differently and breastfeeding is one of those things. So basically my breastfeeding, breastfeeding journey um, has been um, good overall. Uh, my supply, etc. I won't go into too much detail because this chat is more about like decision making rather than um, my personal experience um, I think everyone's experience is different so it doesn't really there's no point in comparing it, your journey to mine or your supply to mine because it's just so different um, but basically I have been breastfeeding for three months my supply has been very irregular and um, I'm not sure why is it because I am very active is it because of my diet is it because it just is what it is um, maybe it's because we sleep trained from quite a young from about eight weeks um, and Abe has actually always been quite good at sleeping during the night um, it was more my insomnia that was the issue for a few months there but um, yeah, with the sleep training from about 10 weeks, he was almost sleeping through the night or doing really long stints. So basically, I think that might have affected my supply. Anyway, because of my supply was quite irregular and there'd be days where it was really good and then days where it would just be so stressful because... A, either would not be getting enough or he'd be like kind of panicking because it would t take really long for the milk to come basically I ended up having to pump quite a lot because of that so um, it was okay when we were back in Ireland for those five weeks because we had a lot of help and Connor was working from home so he could always watch Abe for like even if it was 15 minutes I had to pump but since coming back to Lisbon it's just been quite difficult because I'm here in the apartment all day on my own with Abe and trying to pump to keep up my supply has been quite stressful um there were a lot of questions over on my instagram about like how to introduce the bottle early um i'll just put that in quickly here that i used the hacker from very early on um which is basically just a leakage cup and we introduced abe to a bottle at like two weeks i think it was made it super easy um to keep the bottle you know for even if it was during the first few months when he needed to catch up on a bit of sleep in the morning connor was able to give expressed milk to abe um anyway so in the last few weeks um mostly with the sleep training i have a group basically my my closest group of friends and um, we have a kind of a mom whatsapp group and I have felt a little bit like I'm not experiencing motherhood the way that they have overall. And basically I've just felt a little bit like I don't really have a voice. I have felt similarly just overall with like just ways that like I assumed I would experience motherhood. I just assumed that I would experience it the way my mom did and um, things that she has told me about breastfeeding, about co-sleeping, all of those kind of things. Um, I basically just haven't experienced or haven't wanted um, the same things that I thought I would. So we have sleep trained from quite a young age. Uh, we do no co-sleeping. Um, and now I have, in the last week, have introduced formula, um, which is something that I just never thought I would do for at least six months. And it was such a big decision and it was quite I was I was really upset making the decision um and I just wanted to touch base not because I'm here to explain myself or to explain why um because again I think everybody is so different and there's no right or wrong um whether you breastfeed for two years or three months or not at all I have found that even like considering making the decision and like the kind of thoughts that go through my mind when making that decision is that you 
obviously are so open and so influenced by everyone around you in your environment and also even people that aren't in your environment on social media what everyone else is doing basically all over the world because we're so we have so much access to what everyone's doing and what everyone's thinking all the time um and i realized uh that you know that a lot of the time we're making decisions influenced not by what people want but what we think they want so i think it's quite not dangerous but it's not a good place to be when you're making decisions based on what other people are doing because you have no idea what their experience is you have no idea whether they're happy with their choice and um, if they're being honest with um, their experience and sharing i find that when i started to realize that breastfeeding you know might be coming to an end for me and um, that I was so focused on you know what was going on in my whatsapp group that all the girls were um you know not anti sleep training but they definitely didn't do any of that they breastfeed for breastfed for you know a lot of them for over a year um, and I found I thought because I didn't have um a voice there or if I I found that because I was different to that, that I was wrong. But I think again, you have to realize that when you start making decisions based on what you think other people want um, or what other people have done or the choices that you have made, you end up with results that are really far um, and distant from your core values or what makes you happy. So basically, I, I wanted to share that I have Yes, I thought I was going to stop breastfeeding completely. Um, I didn't. I have introduced formula and I, in introducing it, I realized again that it was important to me th to keep just a little bit of breastfeeding, even one feed a day. So that's what I'm trying for the moment to see if it works. Um, but yeah, that is my update on breastfeeding. And... I won't again like I said go into too much detail on why because again it's just not important um, I am super happy with my decision um, and again the other thing I would say is that I didn't um, I didn't really consult people in making my decision I think that was something else that you can um, want to reach out to moms in your life and want to discuss these things um, but that can be really confusing and it can be a lot of information there's just so much information out there and again everybody's experience is different so um, like that I thought that I would be just like my mom and that expectation um, was a tough one to swallow when I realized I wasn't and um, in the end I think it's just so okay you know to realize that we have different core values we have different needs you know I my relationship with Connor is something that is super important to me and being a wife and a friend and all of those things are really important to me and the for example with the sleep training that was really a really easy decision for me to make um to do sleep training because um sleep was something that was affecting how i could exercise and then because i couldn't exercise it was affecting my mental health it was affecting my mood with my husband um so that was an easy decision for me to make and then it was when i realized that my friends didn't do it that I was like oh maybe this is wrong you know so you start to be influenced by what other people are doing when actually it, it is working perfectly for you so um, anyway uh, I think breastfeeding is such a, a, a touchy topic and I never understood why people didn't breastfeed um, up until I was breastfeeding Abe and I realized um, for me anyway that it was a lot of work and it was when I waited up um, at three months I had done enough it felt like a really natural decision to make um, in the end when I sat with it by myself and I realized um, the things that I would gain by stopping um, exclusively breastfeeding and I think two things that I have learned in let's say de deciding to leave Portugal and to go back to Dublin and all the decisions you make every day and being a mom I think that there's no right or wrong decision I think whatever decision you make even if it's a disaster initially the things that you learn along the way 
are invaluable and they will bring you to a better place in the end anyway. Um, so I, I think that that's a really important thing. It helped me anyway in the decision with breastfeeding. It helped me in the decision, you know, moving back to Dublin is, you know, that really whatever decision we make will be the best decision and there is no wrong decision and I think the best thing you can do is ask yourself what's the best thing that could happen not what's the worst thing that could happen and um, because our body and our our nervous system is already built to think about what's the worst thing so I think it's it's much better and a lighter way to approach decision making by just saying what's the best thing that could happen here um, and for me with breastfeeding is you know that Abe is healthy and that I am happy and that is hopefully what happens. So I am going to finish doing my makeup and then because I'm terrible at doing my I've just realized I've done basically nothing terrible at doing my makeup and talking at the same time that's why I rarely do it. I actually can't believe Abe is still sleeping. He's been waking up so much. And this nap, especially this one o'clock nap is meant to be like two hours long. Um, and he rarely now, he used to in the beginning do the two hours, but now it's like after 40 minutes he's awake and basically we have to continuously for the next hour and 10 minutes try to get him settled back in. So um, I'm really surprised that he's still asleep in there. Let me know if you have any questions about the um, sleep training, etc. how to introduce bottles, how to wean, if those are questions you have. I wanted to kind of just do a little bit of an update in general on my life in this video but if there are people i know there are moms out there who follow me on instagram and there were so many questions about sleep training so i'm so happy to do a specific video on that just i don't want to bore all the people that aren't interested in um baby talk um i didn't want to bore you in this vlog but uh yeah, if there are questions, I'm so happy to do a in-depth video on that and um, share my tips and tricks. food and maybe a coffee but Abe is not happy and we're not really sure what's wrong with him. He's slept, he's eaten and he's a baby so he can't tell us what's wrong. Um, but I literally got changed about a million times. I feel awful in everything I'm wearing today so I just hate those days. We just got our uh, taxi down to um, Lupita, which is our favorite pi pizza place. If you're ever in Lisbon, and if you follow my channel, you know I'm always there. Um, but we're gonna see if Fabric by Ferez is doing lunch still. They are a sister of Ferez, which is like a Middle Eastern place. So it's kind of a new part of it. It's like a bakery where they do usually sandwiches for lunch, but I don't know if we're too late, so we'll see. There's my sexy husband. So, Fabric by Ferez is not open. So, I'm gonna get a coffee and we're gonna go down to this kiosk place that um, we wanted to try for a while. Well, Connor has to get a shrimp sandwich. It's supposed to be really famous. So, by the way, Connor chose Abe's apple today. <laughs> yeah. Tired. I'll take three of those. <laughs> Go on, Connor. So Connor has ordered three sandwiches for himself, but they were four fifty each. So we'll see how that goes. My coffee that was six euro twenty. It's just your average regular Joe coffee for six twenty. Yeah. 
Somebody feed Connor. Mm. Very good. Spicy? No. Nice mayonnaise. Oof. Oh, you, no. need to, you need to raise it. Eight. Eight. Right on cue. You're Are you comfy? Are you? No. Oh. Are you grunting at your mother? Don't talk back to me like that. Okay? You're far too young to be talking back to your mother. What? No. No, I don't like that tone. I don't like that tone. Ah. You are very cute. So you probably hear um, somewhere over the rainbow on in the background. It's the only, well, not the only song, but it is Abe's favorite song. And you put it on and he just goes into some sort of trance. It's insane. Ever since he was like, I would say about four weeks old, he's just like moth to a flame. So it's like quarter past six, I think. I think about quarter past six and we usually wait till seven or his feed time is seven and he goes down at about half seven but there's no way we're going to be able to stretch him he's in such a bad mood um so this next hour is just going to be trying to stretch him as long as we can and then get him down and i am so glad i made that chili oh my god because i'm exhausted and i'm ready just to get on the couch watch love is blind and yeah that is my weekend vlog i will probably check out now most of this video is probably just me nattering away about my live live catch up but it was due and it was requested so hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you so much for tuning into my channel if you have not subscribed i am going to be able to do so much more vlogging because my mom is actually arriving this week and i'll be able to get some actual work hours in during the week which means it's not just all weekend vlogs and i can do day in my life i can um do those videos for you mamas out there who requested like my newborn essentials and new mom essentials those kind of things so please do comment below send in your requests and yeah i will see you next week for another video on my channel